Uh, this is Pastor Omar, and I wanted to post a number of videos in which I am going to elaborate a little bit on what I began talking about in the six takeaways, if you saw those videos. And these are going to be shorter, so I may still take some time later on to elaborate on some of these topics. This is going to be more of an, an introduction to these uh, different um, themes in Christian doctrine. I think it's really about what do we as Christians believe about Scripture and how can we think uh about scripture. So I want, if you listen to the six takeaway video, you may have heard me make the comment that we as Christians can embrace science. And at the same point, I think, well, actually a little bit later on in the video, I mentioned that we, I believe in the uh, bodily resurrection of Jesus. So you may have kind of been thinking if you were, uh, if you heard that, wait a minute, how can it be true that Pastor Omar just said we can embrace science and then is talking about some other things in which, which are not scientifically provable? Uh, so I wanted to address that topic first and sort of give you my viewpoint on how we as Christians can embrace science or reason, uh, faith, you know, and logic. And again, this is just an introductory video. It'll be shorter then uh and then later on i may begin to elaborate a little bit more on these but basically i think we can take most of the views that have to do with science and religion and i'm going to put them in three categories or three different ways that i think most people would look at this topic um, how their views fit into three general areas so the first one uh i don't necessarily have a name for this but maybe we can call this the all science um uh, approach but it's a view that generally uh, this view accepts all of mainstream science and the tools and methodology of science in order to in uncover truth. Um, now, again, I have no problem with that. I think we as Christians can embrace this. But in this particular view, it would interpret all of Scripture within that light completely. So it would reject anything that would smack of the supernatural or something that perhaps we cannot really fully explain using science or scientific methods in, in, in today's world. So something like the resurrection of Jesus, for example, would be looked at as being uh, as not having happened uh, or perhaps spiritualizing it. So the resurrection of Jesus is something that would be um, uh, spiritual. You know, perhaps the early community of Christians developed this idea because of experiences that they had had, but they were um, they weren't actual. They really didn't see the living Christ um, in, in 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 living form, and the story sort of developed beyond this. And there's other areas that that would explain away uh, areas of scripture, but for the most part, it really exclusively looks at scripture from the standpoint of this of the uh, historical method or of science. Um, now, the second, I think, group, and yes, I think this is. I'm speaking here about Christians, not. Not, at, not other folks that are people that are coming to scripture to interpret it. Um, this is primarily people that would c consider themselves to be Christian in, in, some, in some way. All right, second, uh, this one I think goes to the opposite side of the spectrum, and it's what I would call a pseudo-scientific appro approach. But it's one that uh, really looks at the Bible almost completely with a literalism uh, or a, a view that says everything that you read is exactly as it says. So in the creation account, if you look at the seven days of creation, then that's exactly how everything happened. So God created everything in 24-hour periods of seven literal days. The earth is four to 10,000 years old. And some of these groups would, will adapt a pseudo-scientific approach and will try to answer many of the questions that people have through um, means that claim science but is uh, factually untrue, really bends credulity, uh, will will uh, reject the things that doesn't seem to fit the view very quickly and easily, but will insist that they can prove that the earth is indeed 10,000 years old and, 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 and so on. Uh, this is, a, again, a view. In fact, both of those two views would be two that I would discourage Christians from adopting. I think both make a critical mistake. Um, that second view uh, I would call the creationist uh, doctrine, because this is, this is the one view that would fall into most um, scientific creationism. And again, I think it is a pseudoscience. I think most of the science that they produce is, is questionable, utterly questionable, if, if not just flat down wrong. So um, what, why? Okay, so why should we look at these two views? What, what do I think is the mistake that both of those views make? Well, let's take the second one first. And the big problem, I think, with the second one um, is that, well, actually, yeah, is that it doesn't recognize that scriptures come to us from a particular time and place and culture, right? 
So if we're reading stories about the Iron Age or the Bronze Age, we are going to see the values and beliefs of the Iron Age and of the Bronze Age completely communicated because this is a community of faith that lived in a real time and space. They had, and they, their beliefs uh, reflected the beliefs of the, the subculture that they were in or of the greater culture that they, that they were in. So there's certainly uh, examples of, um, you know, when, if I wanted to get, get, in, get a little bit more into details on this, if you looked at a flat earth, for example, example cosmology, that if that's what the view was, then don't be surprised if when you're reading in some parts of the Hebrew scriptures, you do see a flat earth uh, cosmology represented in some form, like the four corners of the earth, because that is how they would have seen things at the time. It doesn't actually mean that we today, with the knowledge that we have about science and the world, and uh, have to necessarily, well, we can't accept that the earth is flat, okay? That's not what scripture's trying to tell us. Paul, for example, um, exhibits a cosmology when he shares this vision that he had, and he talks about going into the, the, into the uh, third heaven, and he, he describes this, and um, if you look at that passage, and I'll put it in the comments above, but if you look at that passage, you'll see Paul reflecting a, seven, a, a unique cosmology, I think, of his day. Uh, it, again, it is normal because the Bible actually comes and scriptures come to us in a real historical setting and context, in a real culture, and it's going to reflect the beliefs of that culture. And so the problem with the creationists that they have is that they don't acknowledge that aspect of it or they insist that that aspect of it has to be, has to meet 20, 21st century um, uh, standards. And of course, uh, the questions that they would have had would have been very different than the questions that we have today as as moderns or postmoderns. Um, now again, that does not mean that there is not uh, something unique in that period of culture that is still true today. I'm not saying that we have to reject everything of the Iron Age and Bronze Age of their faith. What they're expressing is the community of faith. Um, and this brings me to my next point, and that is the problem that I have with the first view, which is the all scientific view. And that is that, uh, it does not acknowledge God and God's history. So if we believe that there's a God, even if we accept that by faith, because we can't really scientifically prove that God exists, that's always gonna be something that we have to accept by faith, right? You cannot create an experiment that proves God. You can look at certain things and say, well, uh, how did all this beautiful creation come about? Doesn't it mean that, and there can be some logic and reason in, that we use to sort of point to the fact that we think that there is a creator. But that does not, that is not the same thing as scientifically proving that there is a God. So it's really only through the eyes of faith that we can believe that there's a God. But if there is a God and God exists, then God has a reality and God has a history, all right? And so God has actions in this world that would be manifest. And so that means that that story, God's story, if you will, uh, is going to be what the community of faith is engaging when they explain and explore uh, their story of faith that they've left for us in the pages of Holy Scripture. And those things are true in the Bronze Age, they're true in the Iron Age, and they're true in our postmodern age, and they were true in the modern age. That's not going to change. Uh, and so the, the difference here is being able to discern as Christians uh, what is that part of the world that is um, that we can determine scientifically is true, and then what are those parts of God's history in the world that we can determine are true. So let me give you an example, um, and so of course my view would be the, thir or the third view that I would suggest is that combination. It's understanding that we can look at the world through uh, science, and we can look at the world through history, and that those are tools that we can use to, to gather truth, and that is true, is true, it's important that we do that. But there's also a God side to this, there's also a God story, and there's also God's actions in the universe in which uh, the witness of that is given to us in scripture. So one of the, again, one of the mistakes that happens here is that for the group that is the creationist group, very often uh, the message, the main message of what is trying to be taught is completely and utterly missed, all right? So take the example of Jonah and the whale, Jonah being swallowed by a fish or by a whale. Uh, in that story, in the first group, what you often get are uh, books or preachers or teachers who spend a great deal of time trying to explain how can Jonah get eaten by a whale or by a fish. 
and trying to prove that point as if it is essential to the story. Because again, that approach is saying that we have to believe the Bible in every single detail. This cannot be a parable, for example. It's got to be real. It's got to be historical. And if it's not, somehow that goes to the integrity of Scripture. I think what happens in that case is that we lose the real message of the Jonah story because the Jonah story is not about proving the Bible to be true. The Jonah story is about the story of this prophet who was given the good news to bring to the enemies of the Jewish people. Because remember what we said, God is a God of love and mercy and grace. And so God is showing grace and love and mercy to these people that are Israel's enemies. And the prophet doesn't want to have it. The prophet wants to see these people judged prophet knows if these people repent, God will forgive them. And so the whole story is about that. It isn't about the 16th or 17th whaling uh, practices of, of whaling and how sailors uh, and seamen have been eaten by whales. Uh, and so when we begin to get off track, and that happens again with the Genesis story as well. If we go into the Genesis story, and begin to spend the whole time trying to argue that the earth was created in 24 literal seven days of a week and the earth is 10,000 years old or whatever it is, you know, um, we are immediately taken off track from the actual message of that book. That message, the message of these stories in the Hebrew scriptures are timeless. They were important to the Iron Age. They were important to the Bronze Age, they were, they're important to our age. And that's one of the reasons that the, the scriptures have withheld the test of time. If the scriptures were supposed to be given to us as a science book or as a biology book, it wouldn't have made any sense to anyone until this time. And even then, it's not the real problem. Science lets us know how the world came about. That is an important question for us to understand. But it doesn't get at the core of the issue of the problem of human condition the way the scripture defines and describes it for us. And that is what is important. So uh, I think the, the whole idea of creation and fall and you know God's relationship to God's creation, those are timeless truths that science um, doesn't prove or disprove. But beware of the false dichotomy. Beware of the churches or the Christians out there that insist that this is a battle between Darwinism and Satan on the one side and God and on the other side and you have to accept one or the other you know it's it's either or either you accept darwinism and you are now on the side of satan or you uh, have to accept the literalism and that's it you know you are not a true christian or you are against god this has encouraged the culture wars this has encouraged us to get off track on the real issues that matter in the pages of scripture and it has you know caused uh christians to have to doubt scientific truth um, and again remember i said another uh, I didn't actually put this one as one of the takeaways, but I said all truth is God's truth. That's something that comes from Chrysostom, from uh, St. Augustine, from many of the uh, church fathers that have understood this and have taught this in the church. Um, so it, this is not something that, and it's something we see in the pages of scripture when uh, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And the scriptures talk about the importance of truth. All truth is God's truth, and we shouldn't have to fear it. And we shouldn't have to uh, wonder that uh, we're going to be po posing a dichotomy here in which people have to sort of choose. Now, having said that, again, there are limits to human logic. So uh, we can understand a lot about the universe through logic and through reason. But remember, there are limits to those things. Um, I always like to point to um, the Star Trek series if you want to see a great interplay between logic and between human uh, emotion. You can look at that uh, triad of Kirk and Spock and uh, Bones as a, great, as a great interplay between how these things work out. And to a point, I think that is true when it comes to science. Science can teach us a lot. Science is extremely important. And I am talking about ma mainstream science. I think Christians can embrace all of mainstream science. But we have to understand that. Uh, remember, science does not give us an absolute certainty. It's a tool in which we can use to understand the world but there are limits to that, and it's always changing as we receive more information about the human world. On the other hand, um, we have to look at um, the ideas of love and grace and mercy and understand that sometimes when God comes into the world and gives us God's story through Jesus Christ, uh, that's not always gonna make a lot of sense. Sometimes that is gonna be illogical. And so um, that is also going to challenge us so again, God's work is real. God's work in the world is real. Um, this again, this is a viewpoint. I would encourage you to, if you're in either one of the first two camps, 
to consider the third option or to move towards the third option. I think that really is the place that we need to be moving towards and one that doesn't see a conflict between science and religion, but ultimately sees that God is working in the world today. All right, Christian, I hope that this uh, helps you a little bit. Again, this is a shorter video. I may be expanding on some of this later, um, on some of these themes later, but I hope that this helps you explain a little bit to explain of an approach that we can take as we approach scripture at the same time that we understand the science and the history and the methodology that exists. All right, the peace of the Lord be with you today. Uh, this is Pastor Omar saying um, goodbye for now.